So we already knew the opponents that the Vikings were going to go 17-0 and against and probably lose in the, the divisional round, whatever. Uh, but now we know, know the order of how the Vikings are going to go 17-0 and and make your travel plans accordingly because it's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. So Vikings week one open up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And as our guy uh, Eric Eager pointed out, the last time the Vikings opened up with the Bucs at home, they went 15-1 because that was 1998. So it was Jordan Addison. Randy Moss? I don't know. But the Bucks, the Bucks are a rolling ecological disaster. I mean, yeah, Baker Mayfield's probably going to be starting. Fantastic. Cool. Uh, then you got the Eagles uh, week two on Thursday Night Football. So quick turnaround for the Vikings. But this is actually really beneficial. And I, I, I know people are, are pissing moaners like, whoa, the Vikings have heard bad against the Eagles on Monday night, blah, 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 blah. Don't care. Don't care. The Eagles... I mean, the Eagles are good. Uh, the Eagles are the team to beat right now in the NFC. The Niners are up there, too, even though they have no quarterbacks. But uh, the Eagles uh, are going to have a lot of change because they're going to have a new OC, a new DC, and several new uh, key defensive pieces. So it's going to take a little bit for that to gel. So the Vikings getting them really early is rather fortunate for the Vikings, who have uh, a ton of continuity on the offensive side of the ball. So I think that... They should be able to get uh, something, something done there. Week three, hosting the Chargers, Justin Herbert uh, and company. Uh, so, cool. Oh, also, ooh, Quentin Johnson, Jordan Addison, because Addison says that he's keeping track of the teams that drafted receivers ahead of him, and the Chargers will be one of them, taking Quentin Johnston. There you go. Week four, uh, October 1st, uh, at Carolina, heads to Carolina. Hills, California, but the Adam Thielen revenge game also get to see Bryce Young up close and personal. Hopefully the defense sees him up close and personal all damn game long week five hosting the chiefs. Uh, that is the late afternoon slot. So prime, uh, well, not prime time, but uh, favored time slot. Uh, so Patrick Mahomes and the chiefs rolling on in here uh, at the crooked Chicago bears, October 15th, week six. Then you have the Niners at home Monday night football. Dun, 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 dun. I also need to stress how how fortunate it is uh, that the Vikings are hosting the Chargers, the Chiefs, and the Niners, three of their tougher games uh, in the 2023 season on paper right now at home. It's really, really big, man. And then you're, you're at the Packers, whatever, uh, a couple days before Halloween. You're at the Falcons, again, whatever. Uh, we get to try and stop Bajon. I mean, that's really about it. Oh, Cordero, revenge game. Uh, then you're hosting the Saints November 12th. Uh, week 11, you're at Mile High for Sunday Night Football. Uh, you're hosting the Bears for Monday Night Football. Da Bears. Uh, a couple days after Thanksgiving. Week 13, late bye, which is going to be beneficial for the Vikings, uh, as well as uh, two road games after the bye, 14-15, at the Raiders, at the Bengals, respectively. And I was rooting for a Thursday night game for the Raiders, but it is what it is. But daddy's heading to Vegas. It's going to be a good times, man. I will have to have a Jerome meetup. Uh, and then the final two out of three games are against the, the Lions, the low energy Detroit Lions, who everyone and their mom uh, believes are going to be a factor in the NFC. Uh, they're they're kicking things off week one uh, against the, the, the Chiefs. I mean, how embarrassing is it that the Lions, who have never been to a Super Bowl, uh, have to just sit there and watch the Chiefs raise the Super Bowl banner? It's fantastic. But uh, two home games, uh, Christmas Eve uh, hosting the Lions, and then uh, on New Year's Eve hosting the Packers, uh, Sunday Night Football. The Packers will be fully in tank mode by then. Uh, and then you have the Lions on the road uh, in the Motor City, a TBD Week 18. So a couple takeaways. Five primetime games is tied for the second most in the NFL. Uh, so even though, I mean, the Vikings obviously don't get a lot of respect, 13-4, and four, Justin Jefferson, uh, this offense is going to be high-flying. So, I mean, they want to get them – uh, on primetime television as much as possible. Uh, there's no uh, Thursday Night Football double dip. This is the first year that teams uh, well, teams are allowed to be on Thursday Night Football twice, so on, only once and all, also early in the season. So I actually think that's a benefit for the Vikings, uh, as well as uh, 8 out of 15 of the known game times are noon on Sunday. Uh, the only two TBDs are Week 15 and Week 18. Uh, so Week 15 is when they start introducing uh, Saturday games. So it could be Saturday, it could be Sunday. Uh, and then same thing with Week 18. Also, uh, it could be flex to Sunday Night Football, depending on if that uh, matchup has playoff implications, which it won't because the Vikings will have the uh, division soda by the uh, by the bye week and the Lions will yeah. Uh, also the two out of three games against the Lions that is huge as well as the final six games only Cincinnati uh, is outdoors uh, as well as uh, two of the final three games are at home and divisional games uh, Lions and Packers uh, and also the Vikings 
basically avoid cold weather because you got Lambeau and Soldier Field early on in the schedule. Uh, I know that a lot of people have said that it gets cold in Cincy, and obviously it does being in the Midwest. But being on the river, it's actually rather te- uh, temperate. Uh, I think uh, Kevin Seifert, who is not Carl Gerbschmidt, uh, and a couple of beat writers uh, talked about that. So, you know, that, that's whatever in that regard. Also, the Vikings are home Christmas Eve uh, against the Lions. Also, they're home New Year's Eve against the Packers. Uh, and then, uh, like we mentioned, they're at home against the Niners, the Chiefs, and the Chargers, which is huge. And, yeah, the Vikings uh, got the short end of the stick in the rotation of the 17 games. So, they do have nine road games, but only two of them, uh, only two sets of back-to-backs, uh, week eight and nine at Packers and Falcons, as well as week 14, 15 uh, at Raiders and Bengals after the bye week. So, that's pretty favorable for the Vikings and also the road games aren't bad like we pointed out that the Vikings travel the fifth fewest miles in the league despite having nine road games but I mean the longest road trip is uh, the Raiders and you're going into the Pacific time zone but you're not even going to the coast so I think overall travel is going to be pretty favorable for the Vikings uh, as well as getting the Eagles early but one game at the time we're on to Tampa Bay we're on to Tampa Bay that's right, baby. But uh, your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, Vikings 2023 schedule dropped. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.